Okay, so how is everyone today? Cold. Cold, yes it is. Uh, so, at this point, we have, uh, what? We have some online homeworks posted. Uh, so today's, what, the 12th? Yeah, 12th. So we have some online homeworks posted. So in particular, uh, the first two <coughs> online homeworks are due Tuesday uh, at 11.59 p.m., one minute before midnight. That is to say, one minute before Wednesday. Uh, two, because, remember, we don't meet on Monday because the university's closed. Under normal circumstances, the, that, w uh, there'll, there'll just be one online homework due, uh, on a given night. Uh, but I didn't want to make one due Sunday night because mon Monday is Martin Luther King Day. At any rate, it seemed better to make them both due Tuesday night. <coughs> uh, besides those, uh, besides, besides that, uh, the first few, I don't remember how many, I think it might be four, uh, written exercises <coughs> for homework are due Wednesday uh, at the beginning of lecture. Any questions about any of that? Yes? Is there a way to see if the online assignment actually went through? Because when I did the first one, I hit submit, and that was it. So I have no idea where if you got it. If I, I get it. I, I wish WebAssign. I, I wish WebAssign would flash something up like I got it, but it, it did get it. Okay. Uh, what the way it actually works is that uh, you can look at your grade on WebAssign, like it'll say like you have this you have this many points. Uh, and then we, then, uh, that's WebAssign, and those folks are located in North Carolina. Okay, then at, at UTD, we have, um, we've got a bunch of hardware that runs Blackboard, which is the gradebook. So, um, to get the data from WebAssign to Blackboard, I click a button. And it, it, it will not be the case, it, the, 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 the WebAssign grades will not come to Blackboard until I click it. And the way the button works is that no matter how many times I click it right now, it's not going to pull the data because those are, they're not due yet. So anyway, sorry, it's kind of, I, I, I appreciate that it causes a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> but I promise it works. Other questions? <clears throat> okay. So uh, the last things that we covered last time were these things like the following. Okay, so we said, well, how about, what if we have x to, uh, whoops, yeah, I can, well, I need to erase that, dot. What about x to exponent m multiplied by x to exponent n? What is this? Uh, so it'll be like this, x to one exponent m plus n, like so. Because remember that this is exponentiation, or if you like, caret, and caret is repeated multiplication. So there's m x's all multiplied together here, and this one is n x's all multiplied together. So if you were to expand it all out, make a big long line of x's, here'd be m here would be m of them, here would be another n of them, and altogether they would be m plus n of them. Uh, so for example, uh, for example, x to uh, 13 multiplied by x to 14 would be x to 27. Because this is 13 x's all in product, this is 14 x's all in product, and if you were to write them all out, there'd be 27 of them. Two. Uh, 
uh, x to exponent n to exponent m is what? Very good. x to exponent m multiplied by n, uh, n. Again, uh, just by way of example, we could do something like x to exponent uh, 5, and then all of this raised to exponent 3, say. Well, what would it be then? x to 15. Question about that one? 3. What is the meaning of x? to negative n, or negative m, I guess. What is x to negative m? Good. So that's 1 over x to m. Questions about this? Yeah, I was wondering, um, I was looking at, can you walk me through one more time how um, that's because it's the Mm -hmm. Because the 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 idea the idea is that um, you could you could view it in in this kind of way. Uh, if we wanted to do x to negative two, say, if that's what we were interested in doing, then uh, it doesn't make sense to say let's make negative two copies of x, right? <laughs> What's that? What does that mean? You know, whereas before. Uh, you know, if we were doing x to 7, that would mean make 7 copies of x and then multiply them all together. It doesn't make sense to make negative 2 copies. So rather, what we're going to do, what we do is we say, ah, we'll switch the negation to the x. But because exponentiation is repeated multiplication, the negation goes to the x and it becomes multiplicative inverse. Well, what is the multiplicative inverse of x? 1 over x. So this would be 1 over x squared. So that's how you get rid of the negative. And now, now it makes sense to say, ah, oh, we're, we're squaring something. So whatever it is that I'm obscuring there, it needs to be repeated twice. So that times that. And then after reorganizing this a little bit, dropping the parentheses using associativity and other things, we can get 1 over x multiplied by x. But that is uh, just 1 over x squared. And what I'm, what I'm saying is that, is that this, this rule is permissible to just jump straight to the end. Unless I ask you a question where I'm saying specifically, I want you to show me all the intermediate steps you should just go directly from this one to that one. <coughs> Other questions? <coughs> okay. So how about uh, how about mm, x multiplied by y all to exponent m? What's this one? Very good. X to M times Y to M. Okay. How about uh, this one? No rule, right? There's no rule for this one. <coughs> this one, we have a rule for this one. Because what are the two, for, for, num for four, what are the two operations at play here? Very good. So this is the distribution. Distribution of caret over dot. Or if you like, distribution of exponentiation over product. That's a thing. 
what are the two operations uh, here for this one? Carrot in addition, right? Carrot in add. So this is, there's nothing here. No rule because caret does not distribute over addition. What does distribute over addition? Multiplication does. Okay. Good. Uh, six. This is a new one, I think. I don't think we got to this one last time. But we'll just state it because I think it's obvious enough and we have other things to do anyway. Uh, how about x divide by y to exponent m? So this one's actually quite similar to rule 4. What will it be? Very good. x to m divide by y to m. <clears throat> Any questions about this? Okay, so let's have an example. So prototypical example of, of something like this is simplify and express with positive exponents. Uh, so, how about this one? Uh, w to exponent 3 multiplied by x to exponent negative 4 divided by z to exponent 5 and then all of this raised to exponent 8. Not sure what you mean, um, but probably. For me to see it easier is easier for me just to break, like, to put in parentheses w to three over z to five in parentheses, and then have an eight on the outside of that, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do things like that. Okay. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to do something else, and that is I'm going to uh, uh, address the issue that that exponent is is negative and we want all exponents to be positive okay so then how can we how can we address the negativeness of of, of this very good so we could say w cubed and then moving this the x's to the denominator has the effect of negating the exponent, so now the exponent is 4, which is positive. Okay, now uh, I'm going to use the new rule. I'm going to use 6, rule number 6 that's, that's written right there. And I'm going to say that this is equal to, this is equal to w to exponent 3 and then to exponent 8 and uh, z to exponent 5 to exponent 8 and then multiplied by x to exponent 4 to exponent 8. No, wait, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do, I'm going to do even, even smaller steps. One step at a time. So z to exponent 5 times x to exponent 4 and all, all of that to exponent 8. So I used rule 6. I said, okay, that's got to be numerator to exponent 8 divided by denominator to exponent 8. Okay. So as for the numerator, what could we do? Yeah, we could use that rule that's numbered number 2 right there. So what would the new exponent be? Okay, good. W to 24 would be the numerator. And then now, for the denominator, I can use rule 4 and get z to exponent 5 to exponent 8 
and then multiplied by x to exponent 4, exponent 8. And now, do you observe that we can use that same rule twice now? <coughs> so it would be w to exponent 24 divided by z to exponent 40 multiplied by x to exponent 32. Any question about this? <coughs> okay. <coughs> Good. So the next thing a remark about the order of operations. Okay, so I've got news. Some of y'all may interpret it as bad news, and some of, the, some of you may interpret it as just interesting news. So of course, in grade school, you learned about the order of operations. And an acronym that can be pronounced out loud uh, is always talked about when this occurs. What's that acronym? PEMDAS. PEMDAS, right? So in grade school, you learned PEMDAS. And here's the news that's either bad or interesting, depending on your personality. This is wrong. And even as we speak, even as we speak, uh, millions of, uh, maybe not millions, probably nearly millions, uh, but at least hundreds of thousands of young American children are being taught incorrectly as we speak. <laughs> there you have it. Okay, so this is wrong. Uh, now, let's, let's recall what PEMDAS means. Uh, what does the P mean? Parentheses. E? Exponents. M? Multiply D, divide A, add an S, subtract. And it's just not right. So let's make it right now. The correct order of operations uh, proceeds in levels just like this. So the first level is P, and the second level is E. So, so far, so good, right? The third level is M, and so far it's looking really good, except now D is also on the same level. Uh-oh. And uh, four, the fourth level, is A and S are on the same level. So they're tied. So these, uh, when you have these, ties are broken left to right. Now let me explain what that means. <clears throat> okay, so for example, Ah, but, but, but before, we, before we do that, for any of y'all who frequently use uh, social media stuff, social media sites like Facebook and um, Twitter and what have you, ever, ever so often, uh, you know, images will come up where there's some kind of math exercise on it, and it'll say, you know, people's, there's one in particular where it's like there's a, there's a, arithmetic operations and then you're, you're supposed to respond to the post with what, it, what it's supposed to be and then you get some people saying that number and other people saying that other different number and then no one can really figure it out and you got all kinds of bickering and arguing. Okay, that's more or less what this, that's more or less this and the failure of our public education to teach this correctly. So let's get it figured out. 
So here's an example of the kind of thing that appears on Facebook. And again, this is wrong. We're going we're gonna to do the wrong thing. So if we have 60 divided by 5 multiplied by 2, 60 divided by 5 multiplied by 2, then let's label all of the operations. So I see three numbers and two operations. What's this one? Divide. This is a divide, right? And what is this one? This is a multiplication. And in PEMDAS, which one of these comes first? Multiplication. Multiplication comes first. As a result, that means that you're supposed to do the multiplication first. So that would be 60 divided by, and well, 5 times 2 is 10. Now, there's just one operation, and that's a division. And because there's just one, I guess that's it, right? That's the one that has to come first. And then what's 60 divided by 10? 6. And this is wrong. Wrong. So let's do it right now. Sixty divide by uh, five, multiply by two. So the same request again. So again, there's three items, three numbers, and two operations. This one is division, and this one is multiplication. So between division and multiplication, which one is on the highest level? They're on the same level. They're on the same. So how do we break the tie? Left to right. Left to right. That means that you select the one that is furthest to the left. This is the first one. This one is first because <coughs> ties are broken left to right. As a result, 60 divided by 5 is what? 12. And then multiply by 2. Now there's just one operation, and it's a multiplication. And because there's just one, well, I guess that's going to be the first one. And the answer is 24. now. Some of you might be saying, I don't know, I don't know, Mrs. Harris in fourth grade, I trusted her. I don't know if I trust this new guy yet. I'm not sure about this. I'm feeling uncomfortable already. Uh, well, let's let the calculator be the arbiter of the truth. How about that? I'll type this into the calculator. So can we agree that's what I wrote, that's, that I typed what's written there? 60 divided by 5 multiplied by 2? Surely the folks who made this calculator know something, right? If, if, not, if not the math instructor, then, then surely Texas Instruments knows something. Which one's it going to be? Is it going to be 6 or is it going to be 24? It's 24. Sorry, Mrs. Harris is just wrong. Okay. And I, so, if you, if you catch some, some, you know, anger in my tone, I'll just say that I have two elementary school age children. And I'll just leave it there. <laughs> Good. Any questions about that? Okay. So, 
Now we're going to do an extremely tedious exercise. So, warning. <laughs> tedious. So here's the request. It is uh, evaluate uh, one operation at a time and label all operations at each step. By the way, you might be wondering, how did I make it all the way through grade school? <laughs> and, and that not be a problem. Well, the answer is that if, if you were to go and review a, a grade school textbook, at least all the ones that I've reviewed, which are ones from Texas anyway, uh, every time that they give the students a, a, a sequence of operations like that, they just never ask. They never ask a question. <laughs> Where, where you have to choose between multiplication and division, and they're out of order, the, the order specified by PEMDAS. So they're just, the question is just never asked. They're keeping them inside of a walled garden of safety. Uh, but out in the wild, you know, you might have to decide between multiply or divide and no. Okay, so here we go. Five multiplied by, uh, 3 minus 2 minus 8 in parentheses, and then we'll square that. And outside we'll do uh, plus um, 21 divided by 3. Okay. And we're going to do one operation at a time. And furthermore, we're going to label all operations at every step. So, scanning left to right. The first operation I see is that one. What kind of thing is that one? That's a multiply. And then now I see some parentheses. Are there things happening inside of the parentheses? There are, so these need to be labeled. It's a parentheses pair. And I'm, I gave myself some room because I'm going to write in there in a, in a second. So now this is an add, and this is a divide. Of those four possibilities in PAD, which one comes first? The parentheses, right? Which means we need to analyze what's happening inside of the parentheses. So scanning left to right, the leftmost uh, the leftmost operation is that one, which is a subtraction. And now I see some parentheses. Are there things happening inside of the parentheses? Yes, which means that those parentheses must be labeled. OK, and then are there any other operations inside of the square parentheses? What do you mean, multiplication? Isn't there an invisible one after the subtraction? No, it, it's, it's uh, 3 minus, oops, it's 3 minus all of that, whatever, whatever it is I'm obscuring there, 3 minus all of that. Okay, but there is one more operation. Exponent. There's an exponent. So this, concerning the red colors, this is the one we had to do first. Okay, then now for the green, SPE, which one has to occur first? Parentheses, okay. So that means that now we've got to go inside of the parentheses. Okay, then there's two numbers and just one operation. Subtraction. And of those one operations, which one do we need to do? The, the only one, right? So 
And furthermore, recall that notice that the instructions say one operation at a time. So that's the one we're going to do. So the next line will be 5 multiplied by 3 minus 2 minus 8 is negative 6 <coughs> squared and then plus 21 divided by 3. Okay. Did I mention that it was tedious? <laughs> Good. So now, uh, I, now I need to make an aside. So we're gonna con I'm going to continue writing this way, but I'm going to come up here and make uh, a little aside for now. To ask a question. Uh, what, what's the distinction, if any, between negative 6 all squared and negative 6 squared like so? Yes? Okay. Okay. So, right, let, let's, let's do this one first. So, because, because it's uh, squaring, because it's squaring, uh, we're going to replicate whatever I'm, whatever I'm uh, obscuring there. So, this will be negative 6 multiplied by negative 6. That's what the squaring means. And then what is negative 6 multiplied by negative 6? It's 36. So my, it, the question has now become, is it the case that negative 6 squared like that is equal to 36? It is not. It is not, and the reason is because One thing that you need to remember is that note that negative x, negative x is actually shorthand for negative 1 multiplied by x. That's what that means. Okay. As a result, uh, negative 6 squared actually means negative 1 multiplied by 6 squared. That's what it means. And there are two operations here now. There is a multiplica multiplication and an exponentiation. Which one of them occurs first? The exponentiation occurs first. So this is actually equal to negative 1 multiplied by 36, which is negative 36. Do you observe that these are not the same? Okay. Any question about that? <clears throat> okay. Back to the question at hand. We were evaluating this one operation at a time and labeling all operations at every step. So, so the, here's the first operation I see. That's a multiply. And then are things occurring inside of the parentheses? Yes. yes. Which means that they must be labeled. <coughs> and then here's an add. And here's a divide. Of the choices MPAD, which, which occurs first? Parentheses. The parentheses occur first, which means we need to go inside and analyze what's happening inside of the square parentheses. Here is a subtraction. Now, these are parentheses. I, do, I don't dispute it. But my question is, uh, is do these have um, an effect where the order of operations is concerned? No, right? Because, uh, because what, what, would it, what would you need to do if you said, 
well, let's do negative six first. All right, it's already negative six. There's nothing to do in there. So where the order of where the order of operations is concerned, because there's nothing happening inside of those round parentheses between my fingers there, there's nothing in there. So that's not part of the consideration. Is besides besides subtraction, is there anything else? What? An exponentiation, right? So between these two choices, what occurs first? S the exponentiation, right? Okay, so that's the one we'll do. Five multiply by three minus negative six squared is thirty six. Add twenty one, divide by three. <coughs> Okay. Again, scanning left to right. Here's a multiply. And then looking at those parentheses, uh, is there anything happening inside of them? Yes. There is, right? As opposed to these, right? There was nothing to do in here. So this has to be labeled. And here's an addition. And here's a division. So entering, so the, the parentheses is what needs to occur first. So we need to go inside those parentheses and analyze. Concern, concerning the, the parentheses, here is the one and only operation. So that must be the one that occurs, right? Yeah. So that's the one that we'll do. So this is five multiplied by negative 33 add 21 divide by 3 okay again scanning left to right multiply and then now, is there anything occurring inside of these parentheses? No. There's nothing occurring. So where the order of operations is concerned, these don't have to be labeled. There's nothing in there to do. Okay, so then skip over that. This is an add, and this is a divide. Between these three choices, which one comes first? The, the multiplication. Why does the multiplication come first? Because it's tied with division, M and D are tied, but then ties are broken left to right. So this M is the first. Okay. So then this would be negative 165, add 21, divide 3. So is that, is that uh, an operation? It's a negation, right? So in fact, uh, I'll write an aside about that in a second. But that's not an operation. That negation is not. This one is, though. This is an addition. And this one is a division. So between this, these two, which one occurs first? The division. So that's the one we'll do. So negative 165, and then plus 7. And this is an addition. And among all those choices, which one is going to occur first? <laughs> the addition. So. Uh, what, negative 168, no, 58. Okay, so now I want to make a, just another aside here. <clears throat> yes. 
is that yes, negative uh, uh, 33, that means uh, negative 1 multiplied by 33. That's what it means, just like we were talking about up there. Uh, but this negative only applies to the 33. And as a result, uh, it has a name because that negation only has one, it's only talking about that one thing. This is called unary negation. Un unary negation. Whereas, whereas something like uh, 3 minus 36, that same subtraction, that same horizontal symbol is being used, right? What I'm saying is, is that symbol right there is the same as that symbol right there. But now this one has two things it's talking about. It's talking about the 3 and the 36. <coughs> this, this one is only talking about the 33. So this is called binary subtraction. I'm just, this is not something I'm going to test you over. I'm just subtract she and uh, just, I know some of y'all like to know the names of things. So unary means having one piece and binary means having two pieces. Unary because the negation is only talking about that one thing. Binary because this is talking about two things. Uh, fine. Those is, so <laughs> coming back to the exercise, first comment I'd like to make is that Wow, isn't this a tedious way to go about doing this? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> this is tedious. The next uh, logical question is uh, for a student is that, am I going to have to do this? And the answer is, yes, you are going to have to do this. I'm going to post an exercise, a written exercise, where you'll have to do it today. I'm, I'm not saying you have to do it today, but the exercise will be posted today. Uh, there will be at least one, probably two, exercises where you have to do this. Um, and if you don't do it, you just will receive a zero. Uh, then the next logical question is, why? <laughs> why would I have to do this? Uh, well, or why, why would the instructor choose to, to subject us to this tedious kind of thing? OK. I don't dispute it's tedious. But here's, here's the reason is that my experience tells me that about 20% of you, um, at least, uh, do not know the order of operations. You don't know it. And furthermore, of those of you that do not know the order of operations, well more than half of you don't know that you don't know it. Right? You just think you know it, yeah, but you don't, actually. So uh, here's the problem, is that you're taking a, a math class at university, uh, and this is a this is college algebra. You just won't pass if you if you don't know the order of operations. You won't pass. There, it just would be almost an impossible thing. So we need to figure out uh, whether or not you uh, know the order of operations, and we need to figure it out now. And we need to fix it as soon as possible, if necessary. That being said, besides the one or two, and at most three times, I'm going to ask you to do this. You won't have to do it this way. Please just, on the other ones, just use your calculator. OK? Any questions about it? Tedious. <clears throat> but what's worse, having to do an exercise like this or having to grade hundreds of exercises like this? <laughs> OK? <clears throat> Good. Any questions before we get to the next thing? Yes? It's all over the place. So it's, the, the, my, what I observe is that students either do it like entirely correct or just crazy stuff that I, it's hard to, for me to imagine what's going through their head. Like it's, it's, so, it's so wrong that it's difficult for me to tell. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, for so this is section 1.3, radicals. Uh, remark. 
This is the definition of square root. Uh, so the following are equivalent. So first, that y squared is equal to x and y is greater than or equal to zero. So that's one circumstance. And here's another circumstance and it is the definition of square root and that is that y is the square root of x. So this fancy looking house thingy, the fancy looking house that x is inside of, uh, that's called a radical. Okay, there are some consequences of this definition. So because of two, because of two, uh, it, must, it uh, must be the case that the square root of x um, is greater than or equal to zero. So whatever comes out of the square root, the output must be uh, non-negative. Which, my, which, is a, which is a word that only a mathematician could love. Uh, what does non-negative mean? <laughs> it doesn't mean positive. It means to the right of zero. Mm -hmm. or, or equal to zero, right? So non-negative means positive or zero. <laughs> okay. And uh, the other consequence of this uh, is that the input must be non-negative. So the output is non-negative and the input is non-negative. Uh, as a result, I could ask, well, what's the square root of 16? It's 4. It's 4 because if you take 4 and square it, what do you get? 16. But I have a question. Is, this, is the square root of 16 equal to positive or negative 4? No. <laughs> the answer is no. False. Again, Miss Harris is betraying you. So, why is that false? Because the output is non-negative. Uh, the, the, well, it's just right here. So now, do I agree that 4 squared is 16? Sure I do. No dispute. Do I also agree that if we, if we square negative 4 that we get 16? Yeah, I agree. No dispute. Yet, the square root of 16 is 4 and there is no other. Okay. How about, what's the square root of 10? Uh, sorry, 100. <laughs> 10, right? Plus or, uh, positive or negative 10? Just 10, right? How about what's the square root of uh, 1? 1. Because 1 squared is 1. What's the square root of 0? It's 0. Right? Non-negative means positive or 0. So you can put 0 in. That's permissible. And after all, 0 squared is what? Zero. Okay, how do you respond to this request? What's the square root of negative four? 
This is undefined. Undefined, well, you could just say because, because clearly the definition doesn't define it. Alternatively, you can understand the reason why, and that is because there is no real which, when squared, is equal to what? Right. But wait, wait, what's 2 squared? 4, right? OK, then negative 2 squared. That's negative 4, <laughs> right? No, right? What's negative 2 all four. squared? Also 4, right? There is no real that's going to square to negative 4. So this is undefined. Any question about these things? Okay, so have a nice uh, have a nice weekend. Remember, there's no uh, no class Monday. <laughs>